This episode is sponsored by Caddy Shack Bistro, your favorite new watering hole. Located next to Crust Pizza Company on Spring Cypress and Champions Forest Drive in Spring, Texas. A place where dreams come true. The finest spirits, wine, and tasty food. It's where the locals go. Use code BEERNERD20 to get 20% off your next order. This is Aaron from Front Row Negative. And if you like what you've just heard, check out CrossTheStreamsMedia.com where not only can you listen to our show, but several other shows that are part of the Cross the Streams Media family. Such shows like Three Beers and a Mic, Dorksman, Secondary Heroes, Scott White's Dan Aykroyd Podcast, The Art of Boar Podcast, Burn Appetite, Bearing Ain't Easy, the STS Guys Podcast, and Toy Rewind. Movie Gap is there as well, but... That's your own fault if you listen to them. But thanks for listening and check out Cross the Streams Media. Until next time, peace out. I want to know what you're thinking. It's technically There's episode 41. Things you can't hide. I want to know what you're feeling. Tell me what's on your mind. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Front Row Negative, the podcast. We are back once again for a new weekly show. I am Aaron, and I'm joined today by Slap Happy Grandpappy. That, <laughs> that, that is a mouthful. Yes, you're joined by Slap Happy Grandpappy. When's the last time you heard that name, man? Like, uh, what were you, like fucking fourth grade or something? Probably. Yeah, Slap, yeah it's... It's been a long like, time. <laughs> you, your mom, your slap happy grandpappy. Yeah, you know, it's, you know how it is. it's been a long time. It has been a long time <laughs> since I have heard that that name or that phrase been uttered. So, so I can say that. <laughs> yeah. And tonight we are joined by no one because we really need to get catch up on things that we watched and, ta- and talk about them because we've been hit with, um, I, I wouldn't call them roadblocks, but with some minor speed bumps where. We bring a guest on. Hey, have you watched this show as we're pre-recording? And like, no, I haven't watched that. No, I haven't checked it out yet. And 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 that's and that's no offense to our past guests. No, it's just that you know not everybody just, watches these things. And we yeah, want to they hate they hate entertainment. It's fine. <laughs> well, they they prefer Batman toys over you know TV. That's also true. <clears throat> and you know, speaking of Batman, they kind of date this episode. The Batman opens up this weekend. And I'll just say it straight out. I have no interest in wanting to see this. This is like the, what the 10th Batman within a, like a 10 year period. <clears throat> it, wait, too many Batmans, too many Batmans. It, it's saturated the market. It's just, I, it's bat, you say saturated? Yes. It, it's, oh my God. Well, here, here's, here's what I can, here's what I can, uh, I can, I can, I see what you're saying and I don't yes. disagree with you, but the only thing is, <clears throat> no one really complains all that much mm-hmm. when McDonald's brings back the McRib. Yeah, but the McRib is the same sandwich over and over. This isn't a different McRib played by George Clooney or played by Ben Affleck or played by Robert Pattinson or played by Val Kilmer or no played one by there. Adam West. Also, also to further <laughs> my keep point. Going, no I'll one... keep naming names. No, 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 There's listen, like 50 also, of them. Listen, to also further my <laughs> point before I was so rudely interrupted, Aaron. No, yeah, uh, no one ever guarantees that the quality of said McRib was going to be all that great, but it still comes out annually. Okay. Yeah. Batman is the McRib of the WB studio. Okay. They have to roll them out because at this point it's like a ceremony. Well, you know, right? also comes out annually Madden 2K2, WWE 2K Sports. Well, annually. you know, and, and, but okay. And there's something to be said for that. Are they still making money off that uh, franchise? Yeah, you know, quantity yeah, over quality. I mean, I'm just saying, like, I, I see your point, but point counterpoint, you know. And I'm not defending it. I'm not saying that every Batman's been great because that's not mm-hmm. true. Like, um, oh, there've been some good ones. There's been some bad not ones. Some good ones. Yeah, I, I, I. That's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and act like every Batman's been a home run, but like, you know, uh, my. my <sighs> Sheer morbid curiosity, if nothing else. Mm-hmm. Plus, by all the vague online reviews I've heard, 
It's yeah. quite a detective story, which we haven't really gotten from a Batman movie yet. That I, that idea they, excites the shit out of me. They tried doing that with Dark Knight. They tried doing that with the Dark Knight movie with the cell phone tech and everything. They tried to make it a detective movie, but it, it came across as like an art piece that right. Yeah, you know, it it happened. They're saying this is hard nosed <clears throat> detective work. Like with the Riddler, that is the perfect foe to have somebody have to, you, you have to use your keen detective skills to figure out these vague ass uh, riddles and shit before you. But is it the awesome. Riddler? Is it the really the Riddler or the Zodiac Killer or Saw? It's 2022, man. I mean, <laughs> really, no, I mean, really, I, I see your point. Yeah. I see what you're saying. But are you going to tell me they're going to take a uh, spandex ruler from the Batman 66 series and bring it to the 2022 have movie? You can all have to have spandex. You could have the suit and everything like the, the bit like, like you remember that one guy in the late nineties and early two thousands, they had like the question mark suit late night selling like uh brand enhancing books and videos. No. On late night cable. No. The only thing I watched on late night cable was like um, <clears throat> MTV oddities and okay. like girls gone wild commercials. It, it, it came in between the girls gone wild commercials. I but, also came to never mind. Just kidding. <laughs> but, 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 but no, but no, there was a guy that was an infomercial with a guy that looked like Bill Nye the Science Guy in a Riddler suit with blinking Riddler glasses. And he would dance. And oh would... shit. I dude, I vaguely remember that. Now that's starting to turn some memories, isn't it? Oh uh, but, okay. but he wore a suit. He wore a jacket and he wore like a David S. Pumpkins type of suit, but I, with I uh question marks all over it, like the Riddler did. I don't remember what the hell he was hawking, but I do remember he's. I vaguely see him in my mind's eye. Yes, I yeah. know who you're talking about. It was like it was like make you smart books and make you smart DVDs and recordings to listen to to enhance your brain power and stuff. But anyways, um, <laughs> the the look the look of the Riddler is very sawest. They made him look like the Zodiac Killer. I get that they're trying to be again with Batman movies. It's always edgier, darker, edgier, grittier, darker, grittier, and they keep going with that. And so pretty much they're going to have what Scarecrow be a mass murdering rapist in the next Batman movie. That, that's oh, the not? direction. Not yet. I'm kidding. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> but uh, oh, God. with Riddler, he, I've always liked him as kind of like the kind of like the boy genius. That's he, like he's like the Montana Max, but with smarts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, kind I'm of like he kind of like egotistical, but full of himself, but also throws a fit if he doesn't get his way type deal. And okay, okay. I was kind of hoping for that with because I like I do like the Riddler. He's one he's out of the Batman Rogues Gallery. I liked I enjoy I've I've enjoyed the Riddler, but I don't I'm not liking this one. I'm not liking what I'm seeing. And again, that's just this is my opinion. This is just my opinion. At the same time. I don't think this should be a Batman movie. We should have got a Nightwing movie. Give the Batman a rest. <laughs> Give him a rest. Let him let let him get some forty winks, not some forty seconds. You know. I see what you're saying, but you know, a couple things. We all cringed at the idea of a Heath Ledger Joker, mm-hmm. and we were all wrong about that. I never. Here's the thing. I never cringed that Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger Joker. I just hate the Joker character completely. Well, because he was such a one note character, and he's still in two. Really, truthfully, Joker is a very one note character. He's just a maniacal clown who just you know, yeah, wants to chase a car and buy a tire and all that bullshit. But like with the way Heath Ledger portrayed him, he was a modern reflection of the anarchistic punk idea of you know anarchy rules. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, he, think... he's the he's the see the thing with that Joker is that he's the anarchist cookbook made human, mm-hmm. but in a Joker skin. When you look at him, you know that's the Joker. When you sure. look at the when you look at this new figure of like the Riddler for the Batman, does it look like the Riddler, or does it look like henchman with a ski mask and a knife? But they're just but I know I I see what you're saying, but. The, 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 this whole thing is grounded in realism. Batman's car is a fucking sixty-something Grand Torino. It's souped up. I mean, they're trying to make it. They're trying to make it more realistic. There's like nothing got, real. There's nothing real about superheroes though, or vigilantes. Yeah, dude. But then that's on that's on you <laughs> to suspend your disbelief, not the studio who makes millions of dollars. What's the point of suspe- What's the point of suspending your disbelief if it's based in realism? Because, dude, th- we okay. <laughs> wrestling, wrestling. How many okay. of those storylines that you enjoy that are based in realism? But those are characters. MJF and CM Punk. Character- 
They're, they're characters. <laughs> okay, MJF is these are characters. They're characters. Tony Khan's a millionaire, and he's giving us stories based on realism. Listen, it's all <laughs> they're not, the same. They're not real, but they're not real. No. I mean, they're not real life. They're they're characters. It's like with with superhero movies and vigilante movies and comic book movies. Okay, this, this is a story. There's there should be no realistic qualities there because it's a suspension of disbelief, and it's superhero movies. All right, okay. Then let me ask you this. And <laughs> you don't have to give me a full on. Again, I'm not trying to play devil's advocate <laughs> or anything. Like. You know me well enough to know Spider-Man yeah. is my hands-down favorite character. Yeah. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm drawing right now. But, like, because <laughs> um, people will buy it. Yeah. Spider-Man is easy to make money off of. But, like, um, fuck, I had a point. I fucking missed it. Okay. Give me a quick, quick synopsis of what you think the ideal Batman, who is the main character, movie mm-hmm. would be. Of not, like, what do you mean an ideal Batman? Just an ideal Batman movie? Yeah, no, no, nothing that nothing where he dies in the first five minutes and suddenly it's a Nightwing movie. <laughs> I'm talking about a Batman film. So okay, so the story opens up. We're in a cave, and we see a Batman that's had his ass beat, crawling on the ground, and he dies. I then just Dam- said not in the Damian, first five minutes. And then Damien jumps in, and now we got and now we got Robin the movie. Robin the movie with Damien Wayne. Oh my gosh. Okay, well you, you said no Nightwing. Yeah, I did. I'm so. old, man. My hair is all <laughs> fucked up. Um, okay. But, okay. Here's okay. Here's the thing with the Riddler. He can have the goofy green jacket. Mm-hmm. He can be a ginger. Cane. He doesn't need the cane. He doesn't need you know the the derby hat or even the or even the domino mask. But right. there are certain attributes that the character has to have to to look like that character. They're attributes. Would you agree to that? You mean physical attributes? Physical or costume? Physical like or costume. recognizable attributes. You mean like visual? Star Star Lord's a perfect example. They redesigned that character for the movie, right? Mm-hmm. But he kept his guns, he kept his mask, and he kept the color red for the for the most part. I know the overcoat was a new thing, or the trench coat was a new thing for the movie. Mm-hmm. But in the comics, he did have the red jacket. It wasn't an overcoat, it wasn't a trench coat, but it was just like a bomber jacket or like a, a jacket. They kept certain attributes to it. Okay. Uh, Wolverine, when Hugh Jackman came into play, sure, he was six foot tall and not five four, <laughs> but he had the mutton chops, he had the hair, he had that, he had the griv, the grivly voice. He had he had attributes that the character is known for. Okay. This Riddler. I don't see any of those. I don't see any of those attributes. Well, uh, may I also point out that we have, we don't, no, no, listen, honestly, uh-huh. how much of the story about Riddler do you know from this movie? From this movie? Besides yeah. him being, uh, because spoilers exist in the internet. I, let me stop you right there. That's okay. why I don't yeah. pay attention to spoilers or trailers. Yeah. The less I know, the better. The only because of spoilers on the internet, someone posted the back of the box for the figures, which okay. gives the some of the plot. So okay, well you know like <laughs> so yeah, uh, the, I guess the, you know like I, I tell my wife this all the time. There's a fundamental difference between myself and everybody else. Like I don't spend a lot of time looking at stuff on my phone. Like mm-hmm. you know me well enough to know like even in group chats for like Facebook and stuff. Like I'm one of the last person to always see yeah. shit because. I just, I've got so much stuff going on. I just don't, you know, I don't, you know, not that everybody else lives on their phone, but I just don't live on my phone. Like, I don't, yeah. you know, I'm the last to know. Yeah. And, and, and so, yeah. And that's perfect. I, I wish I had that. I wish I, I wish I could have that. But I mean, I was only checking the back of the figure because uh, I, have, I have another friend that is a big Batman figure collector or, or a DC figure collector. He loves the DC Direct. He loves mm-hmm. the, uh, what was the, what was the old one? The, the figures that came out in like 2008, 2009, the DC ones. Oh, the, 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 yeah, the one. DC Multiverse? Universe. DC Multi- Universe. Something like that. Uh, he yeah. collects some of those. So we were talking and um, he showed me the picture. He's, he's like, hey, do you think they're going to really see any more figures for this line? He shows me the back of the one of the figures that he acquired. And it happened to be Riddler. And I'm like, oh. Well, I would hope there would be. A, there's probably going to be a wave two, just not right now. They're going to probably wait till after the movie comes out for the wave two. Mm-hmm. And I read the back of the thing because I'm like, because when I see words, I have to. I, I immediately have to read them all. I have. It's just something I do. 
I see yeah. words, I read them. I stop and I read everything. I, I I'm weird like that. But <laughs> yeah, and I read and I read and I read the synopsis. So uh man, I, you know DC one of the curses that DC is 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 saddled with and probably to their own, you know, on their own fault is that they're trying to constantly catch up with what Marvel's doing and they just can't because they're not yeah, putting the work try. in. They definitely they're not, try. They're not, they haven't earned it. And the thing is, uh, maybe, maybe just maybe this Batman is an attempt, hopefully, to start, you know, put Again? a flag down. You know what I mean? I, yeah, because we're talking about a young Batman, <laughs> relatively young, well, compared I mean, to well, every other Batman we've seen. Well, like, well, this would be like what the third or fourth attempt for them to start a base for a movie universe franchise. Yeah, they but tried, how was they, Robert Pattinson? They tried doing that. I think the first one with Batman versus Superman. No, Man of Steel. Batman versus Superman, Wonder Woman, Shazam, Aquaman, Justice League, however you want to look at it. Batman's the only, Batman's the main anchor for DC's everything. No, he's their cash cow. Right, just like Spider-Man would be for Marvel. And and, well, and then, of course, Marvel's changing the game now with everything. But, like, <laughs> yeah, he's the, Batman is the flagship character for DC. So it yeah. stands to reason that if they're going to put down another flag and try again, you're gonna start at point A, which yeah, is Yeah, but again, that's again the with Marvel, they have put they they for a while they focused everything on Iron Man. He was the focal point, and then they did then cap. I and think then, Iron Man was a happy accident, but yeah. Yeah, but well once they started making the movies, people fell in love with the movie characters. And instead of it being focused on one person, you had a whole fledgling of fandom for different characters which was great which even the tv shows it was great but to main, to the main point the batman comes out this weekend <laughs> sorry man uh, i just I'm, I'm excited to see this movie yeah, i can't help yeah. it i want to hey. i want to know more hey it's your thing but i'm gonna wait for it to come on hbo max i can wait <laughs> like just like a week just like i waited for the eternals i can wait for the batman to come on the streaming you're excited and you know what i'm happy i'm happy that you're excited i have <laughs> I have several friends who are super Batman fanatics who live their life the Batman way, even though they don't have the Batman money. They do that. Oh, okay. No, I'm just being real. I'm, I'm not hating on them, but I'm just being yeah. real. I got you. So you're excited. I hope you get the popcorn bucket because I hear that's really hard to get now. Same with, same with the, the Batman merch that's at Little Caesars. Unless Devin hooked you up. He's got uh, me. Yeah, he got me the hat and the poster. Yeah, the the hat does look pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, the hat does look pretty. Does look pretty slick. Well, I was gonna tell you if it doesn't fit my head, which most hats usually <laughs> don't, I'll I'll give it to you if you want it. I'll take it. Yeah, that the the logo does look pretty cool, but I am in no rush to go see the movie. I'm not. I can wait. So, but well, that's fair, man. That's fair. And when you see it, let us know. You know, let everybody know what you think. We'll 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 talk about it next. time. You can talk about it next time. That way. I really think what they're all they're. I think they're putting. Honestly, I don't think they're putting all their chips in Batman on this thing. I think all their chips are going into Flashpoint. I think they realize they have to start anew, and yeah. Batman's going to be a part of that new. This Robert uh -huh. Pattinson Batman, but they're going to. I think they're going to be trying to spin out of everything they fucked up with uh, Flashpoint. Honestly. Probably so. So jumping from a movie that that you are excited to see, let's talk about a movie that. To be blunt, we were. It had uh. hype. The trailer looked great. It mm -hmm. had promise. And we didn't get to talk about it last week, uh, but really there's not much to talk about except for the kills. But a movie that... <sighs> Here's the thing. You go on social media, it's split 50-50. This is another one of those Army of the Dead type of reviews for people to where you really? really liked it for being the silly gore fest that it was, or you hated it for the lack of story that it did not have. So we're talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is the, a legacy sequel, which <laughs> is, if you've seen Halloween 2018 or any Godzilla movie after 1954, this is what it is. It is a direct sequel to the original movie that, ignore, that ignores everything else. And I have a huge problem with that, by the way. Is it annoying as hell? Very much so. Is it frustrating? Yes, because you have to have the super fans, like myself, having having to explain to people who don't know what's <laughs> going on. 
you really don't know what's going on to the to the casual fans, mm-hmm. the, to the fans who do enjoy horror but don't know what. So Texas Chainsaw Massacre, this movie, 2022, is the second movie to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which happens 50 years later. 50 years later. And I'm yeah. using that as a stepping point because some things do not age well. And apparently in Texas, 50 years is 15 years in chainsaw years. So, you know, that was the, that was, the, yeah, God damn it, dude. That was problem number one. I'm like, 50 yeah. years? How? What? Like, listen, I've known people, I mean, I'm only 40 years old, but I've known people who have been older than 50 years old. And I've seen old yeah. pictures of my dad. And I see pictures, I see my dad now. My dad yeah. is considerably older than he was 50 years ago. Yeah. So, you know, when we when we have, you know, and God bless the guy who they picked to, to be the actor, like, good for him that he got the role and everything. But, like, yep. you know, um, God, talking about the guy who conceivably 50 years from later, so he's got to be in his 70s, minimal. <clears throat> yeah, he, he was supposed to be in his early 20s or mid-20s and when that movie was filmed for yeah. timeline for timeline reasons. 50 years later, he's in his mid seventies and he's still going to move around like that. Leatherface is going to move around like that. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what kind of a uh, human jerky he's eating to, to stay youthful, but I mean, come on. Hey, they weren't too far from Austin, Texas, man. It's 2022. It's fucking tofu burgers for all we know. And then, and then you, and then you got Lori Strode ordered from wish with, with the Oof. heroin from the first movie coming back. And it's just like, wow, what happened? I mean, Seriously, what I, I had to ask myself if the guy who was directing or the writers or whoever it was that was responsible <laughs> for this even watched the first movie because you know the, I see what they were going for in some things I understand it but there's like the biggest problem for me is how the this guy who was in his twenty something wasn't it a, like a was it a halfway house or a children's home in, in this movie yeah it was a it, no it was an orphanage it was a an orphanage an orphanage so a guy in his mid twenties who killed, you know, a bunch of people and shit, ended up going from a dilapidated house on a county road in Texas to an orphanage? And, if, and he's yep. 27 years old? At the time. Yeah. Bullshit. So, the, so the director is David Blue Garcia. I, I hate his last name already. Yeah, see? that's re- you, you call your cousin. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And what he has directed... Has, there's a movie called Tejano, which came out two years ago, oh, and okay. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's he loves it. Texas. Okay, those are the only two things. Before that, was like, was it like music videos or some bullshit? Uh, I'm looking. Uh, pretty much documentaries. He was a producer for a lot of things. Yeah, you know, he was a producer for an episode of Red vs. Blue. <sighs> okay. Well, I mean, I guess everybody needs their breakout, right? I mean, yeah. Well, he, like, needs his, he needs his legs broken. Oof, damn. <laughs> I'm not advocating violence against the guy. I'm simply saying that, uh, you know, a modicum of research could have went a long way. Um, I mean, j- just to connect the dots a little bit more, just to do something a little bit better. Um, and there's another podcast I listen to called uh, Forever Midnight. Uh, they're, they're a horror movie review podcast. Really entertaining, a lot of fun. And they put a lot of points out there of what was wrong with this movie. And I'm, and I, and I feel the same way that they did. The storyline was all over the place. They, they were trying to jump on the Halloween 2018 bandwagon. Mm-hmm. They copied it, but you, you lose so many stories and plot points in this movie that you don't know what the hell's going on. And you're asking them why that, why they did that, why this happened and everything. And apparently Elon Musk has great, 5G tower technology and Podunk town in Texas to where, to where self-driving cars can keep moving away when the person sitting in the driver's seat is pulled out of the car and beheaded. Was she in the driver's seat or was the other girl in the driver's seat? I thought she was in the driver's seat or, or, but still there's a weight sensor in that car. And when a passenger leaves via the roof, come on. Come on. No, I, I agree. I, if that's if that's the case, if she was the one driving, which I'm guessing she was the old, I mean, she was the older sister. Yeah, so it makes sister. sense. So yeah. Um, I, I just I was so confused. I wanted to like it. I did. So did I. 
so because I. I, I know it's it's hard. We keep getting these lackluster horror films, uh, you know, kind of you know spoon fed to us. Yeah. But every now and then we get a good one, and so we keep hanging on. We're like wrestling. You know, of course, we're wrestling fans. We're the <laughs> same guys who keep saying, "Oh, it'll get better. It'll get better. It'll get better." Well, and, I mean, look, okay, for the last few years, the movie, the first It movie, was great. That's I what mean, got me back into it. That's, that's what made me care again, man. I, honestly, I think we saw it twice in theaters because me and you rushed to go see it. Yes. And then we saw it with Bacon. Mm-hmm. It was great. Then It Chapter Two came out, and It Chapter Two didn't have the same. It like, didn't catch um, the same magic, yeah. Yeah, as the first one, it didn't have the same magic as the first one. It was decent, but it didn't, but it was missing on like the first one was. I hate to blame the older actors, but I didn't feel like honestly. I think it was a perfect storm of Stranger Things bringing yeah. us into the idea of like the young kids being in the horror thing. Yeah, I guess. And that. so like that connected us to it. But then we have people who are our age who are like, yeah, they're making, these, these people are making dumb decisions. Fuck them. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, <clears throat> they should be smarter than this. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. Know. And then and then you have, you know, uh, Jordan Peele coming out as the director. You had the movie uh, Get Out, which was great. Yeah. And then you had Us. I liked Us. I, I know a lot of people didn't like it. I, but... didn't, I, I didn't like it. I think too much explanation for that. Well, I think it was, I hate to use the word think piece, but I mean, honestly... I think one of the big parts of Jordan Peele's horror movies and his takes on horror, and uh-huh. God help me if I'm wrong here because I don't want to piss anybody off. But like, <laughs> um, I think he looks at life a way a lot the the way the the a, a, a portion of the black community looks at life where, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, truth in advertising, man, like yeah. the struggle is indeed real for that facet of, of society because I honestly, dude, and God help me, I didn't know what white privilege was mm-hmm. until you know, a couple years after we started hearing it a bunch. Yeah. And I had a, a black friend explain it to me that it wasn't just because I was just getting free shit or thing, you know, I was just living a life that was simple. It was that I literally can pull up to a stoplight and a cop can yeah. pull up behind me. And I don't have to think twice about my registration because right now my registration's out. God help me. I have to go get it fixed. But like, <laughs> You know what I mean? I, like, I understand and I'm not trying to be funny. I'm saying like I don't have yeah. that concern. No, 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 like, no. I'm not. I know you're not trying to be funny. I, th- that just your registration kind of caught me off guard. I mean, but yeah. it's you know, registration is bullshit. It's just an excuse to give you a fucking ticket. But 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 but, but, yeah. but but back to the but back to the horror element of new horror coming Sorry. out yeah. over the last few years. But we, we don't we don't want we don't want to go go down the woke tunnel. Um, I'm with you I'm again. With you. Us very mixed. I didn't like it. I know a lot of people didn't like it. I didn't like it for the fact that the story was too over explained to certain things, and they added elements that I don't think need to be added. I think more mystery. I think might have been better for it. But he did make the Candyman movie that came out, and I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, I don't I've know. Heard mixed reviews. So I've, I've I've actually kind of held off. Okay. On that. Am I am I have I done a good thing by holding off or yes. missing well, it? Well, yeah. Don't look at the reviews because it has. I'm not going to say if it's a reboot or if it's a sequel. It's got that it's curse somewhere of, in between. It's got that curse of Chucky. Yes, it is. It's got the curse of Chucky kind of mystery to it. Mm, okay. Well, but it's good. But it's good. It is okay. It is good. I I I, I bought I bought the Blu-ray only because it was on sale for fifteen bucks. Hmm. Is it, it streaming anywhere yet? Uh, I believe it might be on HBO. I think. I think it's on HBO. Hmm, but okay. I was very surprised of how well it was. I was very surprised of how visually it was well. It, I don't want to keep using her well done. Visually, it was stunning. They used a lot of tricks to trick the eye, to foreshadow things that were coming, and to surprise you. Okay. It was just, it was a good movie. Uh, I bought it. I own it. I am happy with my purchase. Very. I, I know that the Candyman himself was an artist, and according to the backstory, and apparently this guy who is like a vessel of some sort, I guess. I'm just putting context clues together, but apparently he's an artist as well. So they're kind of really rooting the whole story in that, right? No. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, well. yeah. I, I'm not going to say much because I don't want to give it away for you because I want you to watch it blind without any kind of knowledge to it. It's just okay. good. It's just good. Hmm. <clears throat> it, it's just a, it's a good movie. But then also to go with the horror element about other good and poor movies that were originally supposed to be tied to something else that separated 
and were really good. Uh, I have to give props to the movie uh, Underwater or Under is it Underwater, the one with the uh, the Kristen Stewart from. Uh, Oh, is this the one where she's like under in like a sea lab or some shit underwater? Yes. Oh, you seen it? Yes, I have. I had my I had my worries, so I didn't bother to look. Honestly, I thought it it looked kind of dumb. I oh, here's the thing. I thought the same thing you did because it had Kristen Stewart in it, and I think that she's the most mannequin actress (laughs) ever made. Right. But but then I heard that this was originally supposed to be a clover part of the Cloverfield universe. Oh. And then I watched it, and then I watched it, and I'm like, holy shit, it was. That would have made sense. Things that happened in this movie would make sense. Okay. And so I'm, 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 I'm on a, my mind automatically goes to, like, you know, ancient, uh, ancient bad. It's good. Mm-hmm. It is good. Okay. Oh, well, I mean, um, shit, I, I guess I have more th- things to watch yeah. than I thought I did. Uh, yeah. But come back to Texas Chainsaw Massacre to kind of quickly wrap this thing up on this part. No, it's fine. It's fine. Um, The movie had great kills. You can't deny this movie didn't have amazing, fun, stupid 80s style kills. It did. It's just a story that sucks. It's just terrible. I mean, I, I can't. It's frustrating. The movie's just, it's frustrating. No, no, none of the plot points make sense. It's just frustrating. And so, so what were your thoughts on it? I, uh, I ranted enough, I think, on this. You know, I, I again, I, I, I wanted it to be really good, but like knowing that it's one of the movies I grew up with, and being that I'm from Texas, so you know, we kind of took pride in this being our slasher or whatever. I think there was a, you know, I think there's something you said for that. So like, you know. We wanted we we have high expectations. At least I did. You know, what I mean, like I was like, okay, visually this needs to be amazing. Um, you know, the kills can't be half-assed because uh, it went straight to the streaming, didn't it? Yes, it did. Okay, so like that was my first red flag. Honestly, I was like, oh, all right. Well, but then again, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, everything's you know, the movie theaters. If you're not if you're not Spider-Man, you're not you know making money. But like, I, I still have my you know. My my reservations, but yes. you know, uh, and God, I feel bad, you know, knocking down somebody's work or whatever. But like, you know, it's not like there wasn't source material to pull from. Like, you didn't have to reinvent the wheel here. Yeah, I think that's the biggest problem for me. Is like, I see these directors and writers are always trying to put a new spin on something, and the, the only thing that comes to mind is the classic. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yep, you know. You could have put your mark on it without having to um, feel like you needed to completely rewrite the ship as if the ship was broken, and it really wasn't. No. Yeah. Did it deserve a new sequel? Because we had one that came out two years ago, Leatherface, like another prequel movie. And even <laughs> that even that was, oh, that was a chore to watch. Yeah. So I, I don't mind to take the chance to go massacre movies. I think they're fun. If they're done right, if they're done well, mm-hmm. but this one, uh, I just, it's tough. I mean, Jeremy asked me, me and Jeremy were talking, you know, FRN member Jeremy, yeah. we were talking a, a while back about Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, like which ones are good, which ones are bad and everything. And I told him, and I straight up told him, said, if you want, if you want the best series, it's the remake and the prequel remake. That came out with Jessica Biel and that one girl that looks like Je- that looks like Jessica Biel, but it's like she's the poor rendition of Jessica Biel. Yeah, those two movies are great as their own. They're they're great as their own. Oh, Jordana Brewster. Yeah, that's it, Jordana Brewster. She was in a she was in a Fast and Furious. Uh, she was the, the no. Other... Well, well, yeah, she yeah she was, but wasn't she also in like a soap opera too? I oh think. shit! Don't give me, don't give me the line. Okay. I, I, not in my wheelhouse, my friend. But yeah, yeah, she, she's good, and the, but those two movies are probably the best. Yeah. Now, the original movie, part two for its zaniness and craziness, part three, <laughs> those are fun. Those are fun movies. Yeah. The fourth movie in that series, Generations or New Generation, happened with yeah. Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger. They 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 happened. Oh man. Um. But it's uh, yeah. Honestly, this is kind of our fault, though, Aaron. We expect too much. 
Well, we we watch. Yeah, that's true. It's our I, fault. I mean, how will we know if we hate it or not? We have to watch it. Yep, and all they see is the numbers. All they see is the streaming numbers or the money that comes in in the theater. Or they don't. They most certainly don't pay attention to negative reviews. They pay attention to positive, positive reviews. Like this. Okay, kind of going back to Batman. This Batman movie might suck ass, but everybody's going to go see it. <laughs> That's all they care about. It's the dollars and cents. So now, with that being said, I don't know how that. I don't know how anything goes straight to streaming makes any fucking money. I don't know. Well, if that was the case, if that was the case, then we should have got a Justice League Part Two. Because that did a lot of money at the box office, but reviews came back as, no, nah, I don't like it. Nah. Nah. Don't like well, it. I mean, I, well, I think, okay, so to be fair on that, like, they're <laughs> in such, no, hold on, but listen. Yeah. They're in such a scramble to try to be the next, you know, trying to get what, get what Marvel's got that they're, 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 they're you know, they're, they're probably taking it to heart on yeah. that. You know, that, that's the, I think they're kind of the exception to the rule though, aren't they? Like, I mean. You know, it, it might be annoying to keep, you know, giving us bad DC movies and stuff like that, but at least they're trying. I, I got to give them that. Yeah, that, 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 that could be that could be the reason why. That could be the reason why. So. But, uh, so it takes a chance on Massacre. I'm telling, my, my stance is this. If I were to give it a rating out of 10, I would give it a 6.5. And that's only because the kills are so good. I was about to say, strongly on the back of the kills only. Strongly on the back of the kills. I mean, for a movie about Texas, filmed in <laughs> Bulgaria, and green screened <laughs> with the oh, worst, God. with the with some of the worst uh, special effects for, for a big company, mm-hmm. uh, the kills make the movie. The storyline does not. The storyline... I think the best... I think the best thing that happened or the part that made me laugh the most was whenever the the girl was in the same room as other face with the shotgun and she goes, this is for Frank. This is for blah, blah. Say my name. And the face turns around, looks at her, gets up, walks right past her out of the room. Oh, yeah. That was it. Yeah, that was it. You said uh, that was the best part, you think? That was the best part for me. Like, yeah, because why would he give a shit? He doesn't. He doesn't care about her. To to he him, he to is. him to him, she's just dinner for next few nights. She's leftovers. So exactly, he doesn't care. No, no he so, should. So, he should be a, a a loose cannon. He shouldn't yeah. be giving a shit. Or yeah. ha- and he shouldn't really even have a vendetta. He should just be yeah. out doing shit. So so, like, what would you give it? Like, what's your rating for this movie? Um, man, I'm I'm probably going to be in, in the neighborhood that you're in, based again off just the visual kills. Yeah, Anything, but that won't be enough. That's not going to be enough to get me to go buy the DVD or Blu-ray. Or oh, I'm not buying the DVD it. and Blu-ray for this one. I, I'm skipping it. Here, here, okay, here's the sad thing. I'll, I'll bring up it again. I own the Steelbook for it, Chapter One. Mm-hmm. I own nothing for it, Chapter Two. I bought the DVD because I'm a completionist, but that's it. Like I just, yeah. you know, I was let down. I, I might order this still. Uh, nah, I'm not going to buy it. I'm sticking to my guns. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. Wouldn't be prudent. So let's jump from that and kind of sticking with, I guess, the comic book theme. Peacemaker. Oh, God, yes. Uh, How much? Okay. Okay. I have to apologize because I made assumptions. I made hopes. (laughs) I put a Mephisto in this series that wasn't even there. That did not happen. (laughs) I manufactured this Mephisto for this movie. Oh, and man. it did not happen. So well, at least you can eat crow, man. A lot of people I, can't. I, I, I'm admitting it. I'm eating crow. I was wrong. I had hopes. Blue Beetle is no way connected to this movie or this series at all. I was shocked by that, honestly. I, I, was, I, I fully expected that as well. It's like this 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 leads too much into it to not be the case. It does with the insects and everything. Yeah. It does. Didn't happen. And you know what? I'm fine with that. I'm I'm okay with that, because it ended on a very James Gunn note. So yeah. In retrospect, it didn't, didn't really even need it. It didn't really need it. It didn't really no. need it. That, and we get. Let's talk about the final episode. Full and hey, spoilers ahead. Let's go into spoilers for the final episode. It was great. Oh, it dude, was yeah. so good. I, I and I'll just my favorite part of the whole thing of the of the final episode was basically. <clears throat> Peacemaker and Vigilante explaining to Eagly to carry the helmet 
to the barn and drop it, <laughs> which is very reminiscent of Rocket Raccoon explaining to Baby Groot to go oh. and set the bomb up and do not press this button. I didn't think about that, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Don't press this button. And what did he eagerly do? Took the helmet, dropped it on the other side of the woods. God. <laughs> Yeah, I legit. I looked over at Nicole's like, "Wow, this fucking bird." I was like, "He uh, put so much. He put so much stock in this bird. This bird's an idiot." <laughs> like, God damn it! It was so good. It, that, that that was so funny, and I I laughed. Uh, I, I I love that part. That part and uh, uh, and uh, what's her name? Uh, Waller Waller's uh daughter. Oh, Adebayo. Adebayo. Whenever she uh like embisoned. Uh, the kaiju <laughs> in the basement. That was fucked up. I was like, she, oh no. Rocket head. <laughs> uh, but it was so good. So those are my two favorite parts. Uh, what are your what are your favorite parts? Of the last episode, I'm probably yeah. gonna have to say um honestly it was a, it was a, it was a small moment, but like when she was talking about they're getting the helmets ready and she's like uh anti gravity helmet, it just floats away. I was like, Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> it's like you would think it'd be voice activated to his voice. Yeah. But anybody can say it. So, no, you know what I mean? Like, that was, I was like, oh shit. Okay. So, I, I kind of <laughs> wonder if that was going to come into play, you know, uh, a little later. And I think it did, obviously, when Adebayo was like uh, Sonic Boom or whatever. So, yes, Sonic Boom. I guess that was the groundwork they laid to let you know that anybody could use this helmet, not yeah. just Peacemaker. And it's voice um, activated, too. And it's voice activated. It, it's, it, it's, it's, <laughs> For a show with like doggy style sex and extreme violence and you know overt racism yeah. and you know just all this all these things that you would not think would go into a show that has this much heart, this show had that much heart and then some. It did. And I will be the first to tell you as a wrestling fan, don't give a shit about John Cena as a wrestler, but as an actor, the guy is making his mark, man. Yeah, he is. He is. He is. He's trying to be the next Strax. I mean, uh, I, Batista. I get it, and I can't say I would do any differently. That that is true, that is very true. So I mean, I'm looking forward to the next season. I don't know what the hell they're going to do, but like, you would assume that um, you know, since his dad is like haunting his haunting his every waking moment now, like that, you know, we're going to see him crack a little bit. I think we're going to but, see. But him that happens. Of... But that happens in the in the comic book, right? I don't... believe so. Yeah. Yeah, that happens in the comic book. Uh, that's another thing, uh, you know. James Gunn has a knack of taking characters that nobody gives a shit about in the comic books and making them super <laughs> relevant. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, now, to be fair, um, uh, Ab- Abnett and Landing, Abnett and Landing were the ones who wrote the the the, the basis for the Gr- the Guardian storyline that James Gunn took from. Yes. But um, so, but before that, no one gave a shit about the Guardians unless you were an old school Silver Silver Age guy or no, I, well, Age I, guy. I, I read the new guardians because there was a part of the annihilation wave storyline. And so I read it, but that's, that, yeah, that's the, yeah. that's the Abnett landing stuff. Yeah. That's what made them relevant again. Cause you're like, and, and even I was disappointed that bug was not in the, was not in the movies. I'm like, where's bug it? You have to have the rights thing. And yeah, it's the, it's the rights because he technically belongs to the micronauts. So does Rom Rom belongs to the night to the micronauts yep. and they can't use that character. And it kind of sucks because bug is a fan. He, he's a fun character he's fun yeah absolutely but i mean yeah. now but knowing what we know after having seen the, those movies like being that if i remember bug correctly it was kind of a you know comedic relief right yes like do you think we would have you know would he really would he would he would he have made a difference he he would have he's the polka dot man in the guardians of the galaxy universe the kind of nervous and timid and kind of shy but he's funny because he's nervous and Kind of uh, the, the 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 character that it really doesn't know his own strength, really. <clears throat> so. Okay, that's what you're saying. But I think on that note, though, I feel like maybe after having been introduced to like Meek and Korg, like I kind of felt like maybe maybe he would have got lost in that shuffle a bit. Oh, definitely. Another... Oh, definitely. Uh, Korg is the bug character just recycled for other avenues in the MCU. Yeah. That's that's definitely bug. That is definitely Buck. Minus the yeah. stuttering, that is him. <laughs> oh, man. Minus yeah. the stuttering, that is him. But yeah, great show. Great soundtrack. Oh, uh, God. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I know your wife has been all over the soundtrack. Every time 
a new episode co- comes out, we get a track list from her of like what's going to get played that night or that that day for the episode. She is an '80s hair metal connoisseur. My wife, yes. she uh, she grew up with it. Uh, her uncles were are metal heads, and her mom was a metal head. And yep. And so she just she was immersed in it. So like there are songs that would pop up on there that I never even heard before. Because I mean, of course, like you know, I grew up listening to you know all kinds of different shit. Like everything for like my parents had you know were country, and my cousins listened to rap and rock and. But like there was some deep cut shit I never even heard before. She's like, "Oh, this is this this band or whatever." I'm like, well, yep. I don't know who the fuck that is." But it was awesome. And it's also another James Gunn soundtrack. You can pull a playlist out of nowhere and make it work. You can yeah, that guy make deep it work. dives. That guy deep dives on music, man. Oh yeah, he definitely does. So overall awesome. for the series, what would you give it? Um, uh, out of a one to ten, I'm gonna yes. probably have to say a ten, man. Honestly, I didn't have a, a single episode of that that I didn't. Yeah, because there wasn't an episode I didn't enjoy. Okay, okay, yeah, fair enough. Full ten, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like I said, it was the perfect mixture of mixture of action, suspense, heart, comedy, yep. like uh, even some horror elements and stuff, like the Maze of the Body Snatchers approach to the uh, the the butterflies. Yeah, like the the food factory. Yeah, the little shit, that, you know, little things like that, you know, like I think yeah. James Gunn appreciates all those things and finds a way to mix them all together to make a really fucking good movie and or show. He, he definitely does. He definitely mm-hmm. does. I will so, give it a nine out of ten. Only because. What are you lacking? Yeah. What, 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 what's 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 keeping you from, uh, you, know, you know, what's keep, you know, what's keeping me from a ten? Blue mm-hmm. Beetle. That's what's keeping me from a ten. That's what's keeping I should me from have known 10. better and <laughs> take a sip of my monster. That got in my eye on the splashback <laughs> when you said that shit. God damn it. Blue Beetle would have got a 10. No. Nah, yeah. <laughs> God. Well, I mean, no. that's your fault, though, man. You set yourself yeah, up is. for that. I, I did. I, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm a fist of myself up for that. But it was a great show. I It was between Peacemaker, Book of Boba Fett. Peacemaker was the one show I was looking forward to on a weekly basis. Yes, definitely. that was the one I was looking forward to on a weekly basis. I'm like, I can't stay away from spoilers and stay away. I'm staying away from this. I can't wait to see Peacemaker when I get home. I can't wait to see Peacemaker when I get home. So, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. That that was that was it. That that was the show. It was great. And so oh, yeah. <clears throat> kind of jumping from that show to another show that we that we've been wanting to talk to for a while, talk about for a few weeks now. Um, I watched it. I, I kind of marathoned through this season, the second season. When I had COVID and I was stuck in bed, um, The Witcher, and I know oh, I talked, and I, and I know I felt like I talked you into watching it. Like, like you, you did. wouldn't, like, like you wouldn't have watched it without me prodding and telling you to go watch it. There's <laughs> no way. Uh, uh, firstly, because I like Henry Cavill as Superman, but I don't see him as anything other than Superman. So mm-hmm. that's just my fault for not paying attention to anything else he's been in. Yeah. And secondly, as much as I would love to just be able to sit around and play video games all day. <laughs> I don't have the time, oh, especially for and the so, Witcher series. That that stuff is hours and days. That's what I'm saying, man. Like I know you guys. There's a, I know a lot of my my friends have all the time, I, or they make the time. <laughs> I, let me, make, let me correct myself. Make the time. They make the time. I don't make the time because yeah. if I'm not making the time, I'm making money. Yeah. You know I mean, so like I have yeah. to literally sit at this desk and draw to to make a paycheck. So. Yeah. You know, it's like ah, whatever. You know, but then like you were like, dude, fucking watch this show. Watch, watch, watch. Watch, 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 watch. Okay. <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to give the first episode a shot. If I don't find myself putting the pencil down, uh-huh. I'm not going to watch it. But when it came to that fight scene, um, I wasn't even blown away with like the, you know, the medieval equivalent of the topless titty cocaine factory yeah. uh, section of the show. I didn't care about that. <laughs> like. Yeah what caught my attention was the fight with that chick, the, you know, at the end of the episode where everybody was, you know, that fucking dark wizard was like, you did this bitch. And the whole town was like, yeah, fuck you asshole. Even though you saved us from a big monster and you come in, you fucking, you know, we can't toss you a coin. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Dickheads. Like th- there was, there was such a an underlying theme of like racism and, and, and equal- inequality in this show. Yep. Um, which I think is so pertinent across the centuries, man, or across history, across the generations. Yes. Like the X-Men is a, is a, is a poster child for that. Um, and has been and continues to be. So if you follow the comic books, but like this game was based around a guy who was like a witch 
literally like a fucking warlock that just goes and kills for money. Yep. Can we say we do any different? No. If I had the, you know, the good looks of Geralt to just, you know, <laughs> drop every, you know, drop every trashy belt in town, sure. And then I'm going to get, you know, ping, coins hooked at me every time I kill a giant spider in the water or whatever the fuck it is. Like, yeah, you got to make a living. That's and if true. you can look good while doing it, why don't you do it? Like, I'm not a gay man, but I get it. That's one of my taglines. <laughs> like, you know, uh, Jason Momoa and all these guys, like, uh, not my not my bag, but I get it. Yeah. But no, I say all that to say the show was super enjoyable. Um, uh, going back and even when I posted that, I was watching it on uh, Facebook. Uh, one of my friends, Steve Van Horn, was like, hey, man, like, before you watch season two, watch this anime um, movie between the two seasons because yes. it explains one of the characters in season two. Well, I, t- I had told you the opposite. Watch the anime after season two because... Really? Okay. Yeah, I, so I told you the opposite, to watch it afterwards because the character in the anime, it, it's it, if you watch it afterwards, it acts more like a prequel for, for season two, but you get to know the character better in second season. So that's why, that's why I said to watch it afterwards, not before. But he told you to watch it before, but but, but we both told you to watch the anime. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, then yeah, you definitely. I'm, I'm pretty. I have no reason <laughs> to think you didn't. But like, I just remember him saying, like, him being very adamant that I watch it before season two. And I was like, well, I don't want to fuck up the visual here. I don't want to, you know, if I want to go in and ask a bunch of questions, then I'll be confused and not want to keep watching. So yeah. Um, while I don't think that the anime was as pertinent as everybody made it out to be. But if you want to understand that one character in particular, yeah. yes. And if you want to understand kind of the the Witcher thing as a whole, yes. yes. But uh, I don't think it really pertains to Geralt all that much. So uh, am I saying that right? Yeah, Geralt. Okay, because I don't know. You know, it's like <laughs> GIF or JIF. Like, you know, is it Geralt or Geralt? I, I've been saying Geralt. So. Oh, okay. You know, I wonder if... Uh, you know how on the South Park episode where they're like saying Siri and shit, and everybody's uh, or Hey Siri, and everybody's series are going off. Yeah, I wonder if that happened to people with with uh, the Witcher or something. They'd say that girl's name. <laughs> oh, mine didn't do it. No, no, Siri, the little little girl. Oh, Siri. Oh, yeah, yeah. And talk about oh, dude, talk about being blown away, Jennifer. Yeah, I would not have like I didn't suspect that at all. And then what they did, what they did, I was like, oh, that fucking sucks that they're having to do that. But then after they were done with it, I was like, ooh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Not hard on the eyes at all. You know? <laughs> exactly. Holy exactly. Canoli. So good. So good. Yeah. It was There's a lot of good shit coming out right now, man. Yeah. But yeah, I wanted to bring up The Witcher because because I feel like The Witcher doesn't get enough credit that it does because it got overshadowed by Cobra Kai. It got overshadowed by Peacemaker, Book of Boba Fett. All these things that are hitting other streaming services, The Witcher got overshadowed. And it's such a good show. It's such a good show. Um, I I can never I I will never have enough time to play the games. No, I know this, but I do want to read the books. I do want to read the books. Unfortunately, I need to do more reading. <laughs> unfortunately, there's seven books. Jesus. Yeah. So, I have to really carve time out to do that. Who has the time? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. Like I'm, I'm every time I turn around, somebody's like, "Oh, I just read this book or whatever." I, I'm, I, I'm I'm still like in the beginning. I'm like the first third of uh ready player two so i i'm yeah i want to read that i, I need to do <laughs> audiobooks man i need yeah. to, i need to do audiobooks i, I can't that, do those that. would make perfect sense me sitting here at the desk i need to have somebody read through that go chart uh <laughs> I, <laughs> I can't do audiobooks because if i miss hear something i'll go back and rewind and hear it now they'll take my focus away from listening and it just becomes a whole thing and i just can't do that so no, that's fair that's fair that's that that's that's my problem that's that's my curse um with that but yeah i want to read the witcher books i think that there's some witcher comics out there as well if i'm not mistaken really so hmm. my my oh, interest man. in the character has gone up my interest in the character has gone up uh i think the show has amazing special effects and it's got amazing uh makeup i mean the makeup for gerald when he goes into like beast mode with like the black yeah. veins and the black eyes and everything, just great. Super scary. Yeah, it's just good stuff. And yeah, I just enjoyed the series. I thought it was really good, really entertaining, and yeah, so much fun. 
So yeah, definitely I'm giving this a nine and a half out of ten. Oh, what were you missing on this? Well, that's because I don't want to give it a full 10 if I don't know what I'm missing from not reading the books or playing the game. Oh, okay. I feel like, so, I'm, putting on, I feel like I'm putting you on the spot a lot. Sorry about that. I'm just hey, like, why not okay. a 10, mother... You know? it's, no, no. This one, I'm only giving it a 9.5 because I don't know enough about the character to say, or enough about the series to say if, if it was perfect or not. So gotcha. I, I can't. But I really enjoyed it. I've watched the second season twice. Uh, it's just fun. It's just so much fun. So, so what would you give it? Um, I th- I, honestly, I'm probably in the same boat as you. I'd probably say for entertainment value is really what the, it all comes down to is if, mm-hmm. if, it, if it engages you. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say a 10. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Look, a 10. If I enjoy shit, I enjoy it. If I don't fucking yeah. care about it, I don't care about it. True, true. You know? Very much true. And this also brings up the thing with, you know, with uh, Henry Cavill being the super nerd. Because you saw what he did, uh, I think, last week or the last two weeks or two weeks ago or a month ago. No. Uh-uh. He visited he visited the um, Warhammer 40K factory. What? Or home or, or, or headquarters. I'm sorry. The Warhammer 40K headquarters because he plays Warhammer 40K. And, you during, know. <laughs> and during quarantine, he painted his Legion army. He wow. hand painted them himself. You better you look. You need to be Henry Cavill to afford to play. <laughs> you do. For those who are not in the know, let me explain to you how much it cost, roughly, to go from nothing to getting started in fucking Warhammer. I tried it. I spent money. Uh, there's a division and there's a, a race of people in that game called the Tau, mm-hmm. and what they are, they're like droids. They're like Star Wars droids. With guns and lots of yes. guns and missiles. They're a yeah. range team. They're not a close up team. If you get close up on them, they fucking get hammered. But they have heavy artillery and they shoot very far. But when you have to roll for accuracy, yada, yada. My point is mm-hmm. to start off playing that game, I had to buy the, the regular game manual. I had to buy the towel manual. I had to get a main army that's only X amount of uh, figures. I had to get sergeants. I had to get a couple tanks. I had to get terrain. <laughs> I literally, to get started to where I would enjoy it and not get my face smashed in every time I played, which takes mm-hmm. an hour to two hours to play, roughly. Yeah. Um, I spent well over $800 to play. Yeah. It's and expensive. It's, it's a baller's game to play. It's fun as hell. Yeah. I will say that. I loved it because I played Heroclix forever, and I mm-hmm. loved Heroclix. I love tabletop strategy games. But you're playing with a bunch of fucking man babies, so it's hard to enjoy it. <laughs> okay. It's no different in Warhammer. But hey, anyway. I played Hero Clicks. I still have my Hero Clicks. Still got them all. Um, with Hero Clicks, you, you, you can spend 50 bucks, get a map, get at least 10 figures, and a few other incentives, and be ready to go for, for $50 or less. If you're you, playing you, with your friends and not in yeah. a tournament, by the way. If you're playing in the <laughs> tournament, you are buying bricks to get in tournament. You're buying <laughs> exclusives. You're buying collections. <laughs> you're doing the mail aways. You're doing all of that. I have, from, from my Hero Clicks days, I still have Galactus. I nice. The Galactus here, the giant Galactus Hero Click. I've got the giant Spectre Hero Click. I've Dang. got the Cthulhu Horror Click. Oh, horror they, clicks. Man, they should bring that back. Yeah, they should. I, I, I've got the Marvel Zombies Wolverine hero click. The that super chase, rare. my friend. Yeah, that is. I did chase. I bought four bricks of that Nova set. <laughs> so they, tried, Nova, yeah. they tried to get a, uh, a zombie figure. And I ended up getting Wolverine. I ended up getting Wolverine. Oh, man. Yes. That was those were the days, man. I miss yeah. I miss Hero Clicks, man. I would I really wish I had the time and the patience to, to keep playing because I would still be playing it because it was that much fun. It was super enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, and I, I even off track. It's our store. It's our, I even it's our, did the I even did the mode. Wizard and the Toy Fair exclusive mail aways to get Frankie Ray Nova to get wow. um, uh to, oh what's the Soul Souljourn comics? Souljourn um, comics, yeah. Yeah, Souljourn to get the mail away of um. Was it Artemis? Was it the, Sigil the, or something like that? 
sigil the the blonde haired girl with like the green and white. Oh yeah, I think I think you're right. I think it's Artemis. She came with like a dog or something, or she came mm-hmm. with a, a pet. To yep. get her to get a uh, to get um uh Fathom one of the Fathom characters to get Guy Gardner to get uh Laser or uh not Hal Jordan but uh but um the the the, the cartoon Justice League character Green Lantern. Oh John Stewart. Yeah, John Stewart to get like the laser John Stewart figure. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I had all those I had all those uh hero clips. Had them all. I had the Danger Girl line, Hellboy line. Dude, you're, I had them all. Me, you're making me itchy to play the yeah. game again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean if you had Collectomania, I might have sell them to you. Hey man, listen, you can make an offer that kind of money for look. <laughs> dude, our Disney trip in October is paid for. It is. I'm okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey. I can always open another store. As a matter of fact, I want to be at the Super Happy Show this weekend. So, well, by um, the time this episode hits last weekend. That yeah, right. The last weekend, I'll, I will have <laughs> been there and made a million dollars. So it's not yes. it's not a big deal. Okay. I mean, dude, 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 hey, look, I'll, I'll build up another inventory of the cool shit. Okay. Do you know me? I. I I find bargains. I'm the bargain yeah. finder. And so hey, I, I don't pay top dollar for something I can't make a dollar off of. So. I, I hate, I understand. I understand. So you, but yeah, he's a, yeah. Henry Cavill to get back on track. Henry Cavill is a super, <laughs> he's a super nerd. He played Geralt. He played Superman. He was in mission. He was in a mission impossible movie with a fantastic mustache. The, the guy is doing everything. The guy is doing everything. And now, um, He's rumor, he's going to be rumored to be in the MCU now. He's rumored to be contacted by the MCU to be a character yet announced, not yet announced. So, hmm. let the speculation begin. Okay, well, I mean, <laughs> if you're Henry Cavill, like you definitely don't want to be the Sentry for God's sakes. <laughs> um, that, that would be hilarious if he was. It, it yep. would be, but like yep. talking about being typecast, holy shit. Yeah, that would be um, hilarious if he was. Yeah, if it were okay, if it were me, I'm, I'm, I'm God damn, what have they not done uh, that you could use Henry Cavill for? Henry um, Cavill? Yeah. Nova, Richard Ryder Nova. Aaron. Yes. Henry Cavill is like <laughs> 260 pounds of slab beef. I like Richard Ryder. Mm-hmm. Richard Ryder was not 260 pounds of grade A USDA, <laughs> USDA slab beef. Okay. Um, and, and I apologize, sir. I just have to vehemently <laughs> disagree with you. Okay. Um, you disagree. Uh, fuck, man. Good. Right now they're going galactic. And, well, and honestly, after Doctor Strange, all fucking bets are off. They can do everything again all over if they want to. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly... I, I I don't see Henry Cavill fucking up playing Wolverine, to be honest with you. He's too tall. I would say he's too tall for Wolverine. Hugh Jackman is seven foot tall. We had to, no. So Hugh Jackman may be seven foot tall, but Hugh Jackman should not Wolverine should not tower over Spider Man. I don't disagree with you, but <laughs> they made it work with Hugh Jackman. That's all I'm saying. Like if you're going for comic book accuracy, you're kind of playing yourself out of it because MCU doesn't do that. There's a lot of things that they've done. To, dude, Infinity War and Endgame. Like, they completely Ooh. negated death from the whole entire story. That was I'm the gonna, whole point of Infinity War. I'm going to make this suggestion for Henry Cavill. I'll make this, okay. I, it just kind of came to me. I'll make this suggestion. He's not, he's not a hero. Okay. Mr. Sinister. I can see that because Mr. Sinister, I mean, you have to, you have to lean into his beef. That's a big dude. Henry Cavill is not a Christian Bale. He won't lose 200 pounds. Sinister is a, a big guy. Sinister's right. So I'm saying guy. you have yeah. to, that's what I'm saying. Sinister is passable. It makes total sense. I could see him playing Sinister. Um, do you, yeah, sure. Sinister. Why not? Why not? Um, we're forgetting the FF. So we're getting in Heralds of Galactus. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd say not mm. Silver Surfer, but you could nah. probably do Fire Lord. The guy with the staff. Yeah, I, I remember Fire Lord. I remember Fire Lord. Um, you could do Fire Lord. You could do Ter- uh, Ter- Oh, Terax the Tamer. Yeah, I could see that. I could 
possibly see that too. He's got to be. A, I'm sorry, he's got to be a big dude. Like, or if they're doing a whole new FF, do you think he could pull off a Ben Grimm thing? Well, he'd just be a voice, though. He like he'd be human for the first half, sure, and then be a voice the second. But I would. But his 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 rock form thing would be much more believable to me if he was a big ass dude in the first place. Okay. Ben Grimm in the comic books was a big dude to begin with. He was a big dude to begin with. He was with, a big then, ball way. Yeah. But but then he ended up just being. You know, CG died, motion cap. Yeah, they so. used Vin Diesel for Groot eight thousand times. Yeah, but it's it's Vin. But Diesel. yeah, no, you're right. I mean, he's not really, he's not, he's not. Yeah, it's it's true. It's his voice, not his look. Uh, Henry Cavill, oh, man, it, it, who knows? Who knows? Uh, if you could pick one Spider-Man villain for him to play, who would it be? Well, before they already ca- before casting him, I would have chosen him to play to play Craven. Yeah, same. <laughs> I was just to, to, for like Craven. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd have him do Craven. <laughs> God damn it, that's true. Um, I mean, they, they, they've already got him. Um, second, if if not Craven, Norman Osborn. Yeah, I want I, I want I want to see somebody that's physically intimidating to Spider Man, not just crazy, but someone that's physically intimidating. I can see that. I can see that. Um, I still say we should have gotten Brock Lesnar into movies and had him play Eddie Brock. <laughs> hey, well, maybe. He has a look, man. A big, blonde, shaved, you know, crew-cutted muscle head. That's, that's, that what, that's what Eddie Brock's supposed to be. That is true. That is very much true. So, anyway, no, I mean, whatever <laughs> they do, I'm sure it's going to be great. At this point, I enjoy the Eternals. Yeah. I didn't have a problem with it. Uh, I think the only people the only people I had a problem with are people who had never ever ever watched or even not watched ever read a single thing about the Eternals. I have not seen the Eternals movie yet. That's only because when I sit because I know that's a long movie. When I sit down to watch it, yeah, I usually get caught up with other things. Like for instance, a few nights ago, I was going to watch it. I was scrolling through my phone. I'm like, oh crap. I got to I got to finish the design for clay. So I started working on a design for clay instead of watching the Eternals. And I was like, well, damn it. And then when I finished it, I'm like, I want to play some Halo. And that's what it's been. That's what it's been like the last few nights. If you follow me on Instagram, I've been posting updates about me collecting the skulls on playing Halo Infinite. And then tonight I collected them all and I beat the campaign in Halo Infinite, which is a very sad, but, Good closure to a story. Oh man, don't say and, that. And I'll just put it, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll just put it that way. Damn it. It's a okay. closure for some characters, and not oh. the ones you want. Oh man, come on! All right. So. <laughs> well, you know, like yeah. you've heard me say it. I've been I've been itchy as fuck to play Halo. I just, dude, I've been to I've been to that I've been to the valley. I know full well what it's like to have halo take over your whole existence oh and yeah once you once you're there you're there and like and there's no checking out until you just finally have that epi- the epiphany you're like what am i doing with my life <laughs> you have to put it down yeah I've, I've done that i've had that battle once and i won i'm afraid to go that i'm afraid to go to the battlefield again <laughs> halo infinite is a lot of fun it's a good story it kind of omits the things that happened in part five because a lot of people hated what happened in part five. They feel it was a bait and switch. So Halo Infinite is more so the sequel to Halo Four than it was to five. And oh, wow. okay, it's open world. There's a retconning, huh? Yeah, you're in a giant sandbox that you get to play with as long as you get power ups and get weapons and unlock things and take out hits. It's a lot of fun. We're taking the, the Wind Waker approach. Yeah, not, Wind Waker, the Division, uh, Ghost Recon, or yeah, Ghost Recon Breakthrough. Uh, I'm sorry, I meant Breath of the Wild. Like it's, it's like you just yeah, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, yeah, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, you can kind of do whatever. Mm. Um, you're, you're rescuing, you're, you're rescuing uh, ch- trapped and uh, captured Marines. You're taking over bases to set them up as save points and drop points. It's a lot of fun. It's, I hope they do another game with the same, with a similar uh, style and gameplay because it was a lot of fun. And you get a grappling hook this time, so you can like 
jump up to places and like you know grapple yourself up to reach new you heights. You can buy on the commando it. Yes, you can, and Sick. you can kind of scorpion enemy enemies enemy. You can kind of scorpion or harpoon enemies, jump toward them and knock them out with the elbow to the head. What? So yeah, awesome. it's 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 pretty cool. It, it, it's it's a lot of fun. What, 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 what? Oh, and the grunts, their their little sayings, their little comebacks, and little talks is hilarious. So oh, I'm excited, man. I've like so when I've been playing, the kids have been watching me play. Mm-hmm. And um, one of my thing, one, one of the things I've always liked to do through all the Halo games and playing multiplayer is, gra- is to grab a ghost, jump on it, and run people and run things over. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's that's my method of killing. And, Ooh, and and if you, and if you ask Jer- Jeremy Allman that, he would agree because he's been splattered more times than anything. I hate being killed like that. So here's the thing: <laughs> in the game, you're able to do that, and you oh, I, and I, I ran over a few grunts. And one of the times I was doing that, a grunt was in the way, and the grunt pops up. Oh look, a ghost! As I bore him down and knocked it, like killed him. <laughs> what an idiot! <laughs> That's oh so look, a ghost! Bam! That's awesome. And and then oh, they say it. stuff like "Run for your lives!" It's the demon. Run for your lives! It's it's hilarious. That's uh, awesome. One of the funniest outtakes I've heard, or like one of the little funniest voiceovers I've heard from a grunt, was I was doing a mission through a base, and mm-hmm. there and uh, there are grunts walking around and everything like that. And I took out one of the elite commanders or elite squad people, and one of the grunts he screams out. Oh no, I haven't taken my break yet before running off. <laughs> That's so good, man. So the, awesome. so the voice work is a lot of fun. It, it's 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 hilarious. So I, I beat it. Yet. It's a fun game, highly recommended. I think it's on Game Pass. Um it's just a lot of fun. And I know that if you go to the Xbox store uh through Microsoft or through uh Xbox.com, there's a lot of merch for it, which they're doing sales or doing stuff. Um, just a lot. Just the game's a lot of fun. Definitely worth the hype. I I'm loving it. So you're definitely worth checking me, out. You're tempting me. Hey, you know what? Just have Bacon play it. She's a Halo fan too. Oh, that's true. She, you can play. She can play it as you do your drawings, and you know you can watch. I'll sit there and do my drawings while she plays the horror level. That that's right. Do it. I might have to. Man, you know what? It works for everybody. It works out for everybody. Noise. Yes. So with that being said, I think it's time to wrap it up. You know, we, we did get, we did kind of a quick episode this time. No guest. Maybe next week we'll have John, the third member of the Newlands from Toy Rewind, and have Amen. him. Uh, That'd be awesome. Complete the Triforce. <laughs> hey, it's funny you say a short episode. It's literally only going to be like thirteen minute difference than what we normally do. Yeah, or whatever. Much. It's not short. <laughs> yeah, I told Dwayne that, and Dwayne's like. Dwayne just laughed, LOL. I'm like, oh, you bitch. Well, because <laughs> he knows you're full of shit. Like, yeah, well, it, it, he, honestly, it's my fault. It really, because well, I'm the one that gets us sidetracked. Well, he knows I have, I, he ha, he knows that I have hope about getting things done, but then the end result is far from that. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, Dwayne. I tried. I tried. It's all part of the plan. Yeah. So, if you made it this far, give yourself a pat on the back. Thanks for listening. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, guys. And uh, thanks for putting up with me, because I know I'm the reason that you guys were trying to go home, or <laughs> you've been sitting on the toilet and your legs were falling asleep. You're like, God damn it, shut the fuck up so I can get the rest of the stuff. I, I get that. I'm sorry. Or, or you're circling the block a few more times to get this episode over with. That's <clears> also true. So thanks for listening. <laughs> uh, Chris, is Collectomania still on Instagram? Collectomania is most definitely still on Instagram. We're not dead yet. We just, uh, we're kind of homeless at the moment. But that's okay like i said we uh we are um we're if you had come and seen us uh this last weekend at uh, the super happy incredible toy show at the saint arnold brewery uh which they have fairly regularly actually yeah. so make a note of that if you're in the houston area or the you know in texas you want to make a couple hours drive it's worth it it's always got great vendors a lot of kind people and just a lot of like-minded fans that just want to get together and buy some old classic you know what i mean um we're homeless, but we're not done. Yeah. You know, I have to point something out, though. Uh-oh. You sent Dan Housen a package promising him a meal to come to Houston for ponchos, as well as to visit your toy store and to give him a tour of the antique mall. 
Well, he'll be here in May. God damn it. And you yeah. don't have a store now. Son of a bitch. I'm going to have to send him a PM. Oh, I'll just text him. We're <laughs> friends. It's fine. Yeah, I'm you're kidding. Facebook friends. <laughs> <laughs> but you made all these promises. He's coming to Houston, and you don't got a store. I know. I'm a son of a, I'm a, son of a gun, aren't I? I'm a uh, stinker. So. Hey. <laughs> just as long as your grits are savory. That's all that matters. Oof. <laughs> There you go, Rito. There you go, Rito. It's as savory as shit. There you go, Rito. Rito, we love you, buddy. Hey, don't you worry, man. We got you. We got you. So got until you. next time, <laughs> always some follow never in friend. Uh, thanks for listening to this show as we ramble on about stuff we watched. And uh, yeah, give us a like and subscribe. Find Please. us on YouTube. Buy a shirt. Um, we have Moon Knight. I have a Moon Knight shirt design. It's on my store, so go buy that as well as our FRN shirt. And uh, what? I said buy things. Buy all the buy. things. Buy all the things. Use your human monies. Yes. Very nice. <laughs> so thanks for listening. And uh, we'll be back next week. I think. Yes. Go to Ponchos. Fuck. This episode is sponsored by The Farm Drinkery. Best dive bar in the corner of a strip center on Champion Forest Drive in Luetta in Spring, Texas. 22 local beers on tap and world famous wings. Come for the great atmosphere, stay for the free high five. Use the code BEERNERD20 to get 20% off your bill. has been a Cross the Streams media podcast.